Hello, folks, and happy February. Tonight we're going to be talking about how to help customers find us. It's, it's, it's so good to have a business where you can sell items and sell services, but you know what? If your customers aren't coming in, things aren't going to make you a lot of money. So the key with our marketing plan, like we talked about last week, is how to put that plan to work to make it easy for customers to be able to find us. And that's the, that's the whole focus of our program tonight. So really appreciate y'all being on board, and uh, we're just getting started now. My name is Steve Carver. I'm speaking to you from my home office studio at Dunn, North Carolina. Presentation number 1105, and uh, thank you for joining me on my journey into entrepreneurship. Been on it quite a while. It's been a long road, but there's a lot of miles in front of us, and thank you for letting me join you on on, uh, on your journey. Tell you up front, I'm not a lawyer or a tax accountant. I'm just a fellow that's been in business a long, long time and still very busy in my businesses today. So I've been there and I've done that, and my advice to you that I'll be offering is, is coming from a good place to try to help you. First advice always is get a good uh, counselor, someone you can talk to about your business, ask questions, don't hesitate to do it. Uh, I'm happy to serve in that role and will work with you any way I can. But uh, there are small business centers in North Carolina at the community colleges are excellent places for you to find help with your questions. We're sponsored tonight by Bart Rice at the Sampson Community College Small Business Center in Clinton, North Carolina. And our prayers and best wishes go out to Bart. He's been under the weather for a few days and <clears throat> we want him to get the feeling better so he can get back to work and enjoy these warmer days for sure. His uh, number is 910-900-4025 and he'll welcome your call to set up an appointment to help you with your business. Uh, tonight, I'll be sending you out 10 study guides covering a lot of different subjects, and uh, I hope that you enjoy them. And uh, we'll talk about uh, the different uses for them as we go on in tonight's program. Homework assignments are one of them. We've all covered these before with the folks on board now. Uh, I will say to you that uh, our online meetings coming up, of course, we've got the next three Thursdays uh, in our regular course now, but a little something special next week on Wednesday, <clears throat> the day before our normal uh, Thursday night, next week on Wednesday from 2 to 4 p.m., we'll be uh, giving the uh, Budget 101 uh, webinar again, which is basically the same one as we did a few weeks ago here. But that's a fairly complicated presentation, and I'd certainly like to invite you to come back, maybe uh, review what we have talked about before, and give you a chance to make notes and ask questions about uh, your your uh, budget and your business plan as maybe you know, as you're working on it. I'll say to you also, if you have missed a uh, miss one of our presentations. Uh, that might keep you from getting your certificates. Uh, attend this one on Wednesday if you can, and that is give you. I'll count that as a uh, as a uh, present mark on whichever uh, presentation you missed. So I'd be glad to have you uh, to join us then as well. So again, you'll be getting your study guys uh, tonight after we close down. It's your choice how hard you work and how fast you go. I'm here to serve you either way. Uh, you're welcome just to take in the information and enjoy it the best you can. But if you're ready to start applying it right now and really work hard towards getting your business up and running, we're on board with you that way as well. Uh, who's going to be the first in class for this semester? So far, we've got several people that are working hard. Uh, Cheryl Wanky on board with us is really uh, turning and burning and uh, creating a challenge to beat anybody. So I appreciate the hard work that she's doing. Uh, all of you are welcome to the class and look forward to having you come back. I keep a uh, record of who's attending. To get your uh, certificate of completion, you need to attend at least five of the seven presentations. Uh, and the last two are required. So just remember to do that. Special appreciation for Latoria Matthews. She's been in touch with me today. 
she's been in other classes uh, during, while this course has been running, but Latoya, uh, uh, two semesters ago, uh, won our first in class award and uh, has her certificates and several more that's in the picture. But so proud of her as she's starting a, uh, some more courses to get her CNA license and uh, working hard to get her uh, uh, more studies in health products so she can help evaluate them. So congratulations, Latoria, and keep up the good work. And that's a good example, folks, that attend uh, uh, five or, not five or six, four or five of the courses, and each year they get more involved in their business and keep putting that information to work. Darcy's been in touch with us up in Raleigh and still working hard on getting her glorious business up and running. She's going to start putting on some actual uh, uh, training services and bringing people online for training and in person as well. So uh, congratulations to her. I hope she does well. Uh, special hello and thank you to Kelly Burney uh, in her business. And we'll talk about her a little later. She's, uh, this is the first day of her real busy tax season. Her first year in business as owner of her business. She's been into uh, tax prep and accounting for a long time, but she'll be running her own show this year. So she's after new clients. So let me encourage you to visit her. And Crystal, here we go. Thank you for that picture. And we certainly look forward to uh, hearing from you and uh, helping you uh, get your business up and running as you're ready. Lucy Maria, good to have you back on board. I'm looking forward to getting a photograph from you and uh, some uh, tangible information on uh, as you get your business started. I know you've been working hard because we've been exchanging information. So let me, have, let me know when you have more to share so I can uh, help promote your business. Ms. V, same for you. I appreciate uh, your attendance, perfect attendance so far. And let me know how I can help you as you want to move forward. Pamela, you're on board tonight and it's getting to be your season uh, for fresh, fresh produce and products from the farm. And thank you for the information that you continually send as well. JR usually comes in late, but she's in the uh, uh, money coaching business and has been sending lots of information. So she's competing for the uh, first in class award and uh, keep up the good work, JR. She sent her a great mission, vision, and promise statements and core values. She sent her, her profit centers listed down and did a really nice job with all those. Uh, she's got uh, time to get her Pacific markets now, and I was going to mention to her that uh, just saying that your target market is people that are employed in a certain age, that's, that's good to say. It's a good place to start, but you really need to be more specific so you can generate ads that go right straight to certain areas, uh, regions, certain groups of people, and you want to search out the common denominators as you're uh, deciding your target market in areas which we'll be talking about a lot tonight as well. <clears throat> Got a, a good marketing strategy uh, set up. I appreciated the fact that she went the extra mile in doing that. Uh, Evelyn Brown has been with us in Greensboro with her new business. Her and her husband have started a new business, <clears throat> Flexible News, which is helping people with specialized transportation needs, uh, handicapped, and other type of special needs. Uh, so appreciate the work that they're doing. And she's done a great job by getting her uh, advertisements out on social media. Uh, this is a, a copy of one of her web pages that when you type in and you search for, for her business uh, news, <clears throat> she's got everything registered so nicely so that pretty much whether it's Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn or Yelp, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a whole half a page of where people have no choice but to look at what you're doing and sign in and go for it. That is helping people find you, and each and every one of you uh, can do that. I've done that with my businesses, and uh, if you follow our instructions, uh, it'll give you a good presentation as Ms. Brown has got started here. Sarita's so still working hard to help us with everything she does. Right now, her main job, I think, is looking after a new grandbaby. I know what a thrill that is, and Tisha continues to stay with us and promote her business as well. Your wife it was uh, so happy for you. We're looking forward to uh, learning more about your Valentine specials. Maybe all of us can uh, consider ordering a basket from you. That's why it would be important for you to see if you can uh, 
I use to mail. A lot of times with your products, if, if you don't have a system that make it easy for the customer to get it, that really restricts your sale to a real narrow local area and keeps you from growing. So uh, let's figure out how we can get those things shipped out to customers so you can have region-wide and nationwide business instead of just local. But thank you for all you're doing. I'm excited for you. So you send me your emails and your links and your pictures and your Facebook pages, product photos, YouTube videos, uh, uh, your Google business uh, on account, and uh, I'll sure try to help you promote your business. The word this week, the word this week, remember what they had, uh, were for the first two weeks, shrewd and mindfulness and assertive for the third week. Well, we got a new one this time, endurance. Endurance is the word that I really like to use. I'm, my pastor down in Elizabeth Town used it a, uh, a couple of years ago in uh, preaching about being endurance as far as it relates to your life as a Christian. But it, the same basic uh, fundamentals apply as your life towards a small business entrepreneur. It's the ability to withstand hardship and adversity. And we'll see a lot of that always as entrepreneurs. And it's the ability to sustain a prolonged stressful effort or activity. And that is exactly what small business entrepreneurship is. The endurance, uh, owning that and seeing it through can be so very important for us. Uh, in our uh, webinars that are coming up, I'll use endurance a lot. So looking forward to uh, including that in our vocabulary. A special recognition for Janae Pope, who was an academy graduate associate uh, from Elizabethtown, actually from White Lake. Uh, recently, she was uh, honored with the uh, uh, being named the person that was going to handle the uh, uh, pop-up and uh, vendors at the uh, White Lake Water Festival this year. So Janae uh, is in charge of that now, that festival. Uh, it's going to be Friday, May 17th and 18th. It's a big deal. A lot of people will show up if the weather is decent. If the weather is pretty, there will be a horde of people there. So if your business is that, that could be promoted with a pop-up stand, uh, 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 food trucks, uh, information stands, uh, uh, recognition in the parade, uh, then uh the White Lake Water Festival might be a place that you want to come uh, to let more people know about your business. If you have an interest in that, uh, write in chat that you would like that contact information, and I'll be glad to send it to you uh, tonight or tomorrow. And I've already got uh, copies of the registration forms and information so that we can help Janae have a, a great year as her first year as uh, chairman and coordinator of the vendor activities. Congratulations today. Also, Kelly, I put in a special word for you. I know that February is starting out your big week in your first year in business at uh, Customer Right Accounting here in Dunn. Uh, I know you've been here a long time and have done a great job with experience, but now you own the business and you're moving forward. And I want to encourage uh, folks to come into business with you, especially entrepreneurs that uh, want to get their books set up for the first time. If you're anywhere in Eastern North Carolina, Kelly would, uh, would be able to help you. So congratulations on getting your business up and running, and we hope you have a great tax season. So again, keep me posted on what you're up to and how I can help promote your business, and I'll be certainly glad to do it. I need some videos from you. It's time for more videos. Thank you, Sir Rankin, for what you've done. I'd like to see some more. And, uh, each and every one of you that's doing that is time to uh, to think about it because videos make a world of difference in your market and effort. So here's that word. It's my job to be assertive and to motivate, and so I'm going to try to do that. We'll start out talking about some more drill skills. We're up to number 25 so far. <clears throat> and in your handouts, you've got a, a sheet that's got all your drill skills and a video that you can go to for the first 30 and watch them. Uh, I talk in depth about each skill because they're important for you to, to, to own and to master. So number one, or number 25, uh, is when you're closing a sale, do your best 
to send and read nonverbal communications. Always have in your mind that the customers are sending you hand signals and nods, and face signals, the way they see it or they act, or sometimes not when they don't say anything, they're giving you real messages. So be aware of that. Remember that alertness that we talked about, that mindfulness, that really comes into play when we're talking about uh, nonverbal communications. So important uh, to, to, to master uh, uh, and, and see what your customers are saying. <clears throat> you learn in, in time <clears throat> that even though you're reading an email or talking to someone on the phone, they are still sending you nonverbal communications, reading between the lines, uh, uh, listening to how the people uh, uh, use the words they're using and, and what they're maybe trying to say, but use other words. Very important uh, for an entrepreneur uh, to understand how to deal with your customers with nonverbals. Who is it that motivates other people? Who is it that's going to motivate your customers to, to buy from you? Who is it that's going to motivate uh, uh, your employees to, to work hard? Who is it that's going to motivate you <laughs> to do what you got to do? It's the assertive person. I want you to be an assertive person in a very positive way, which is a good thing. Tax avoidance or tax evasion. These are big words. And we're, of course, moving into tax season today, uh, people getting ready. Tax avoidance is a very good thing for us as individuals and as entrepreneurs because we need to, to know how we can structure our business in such ways to help us save more money for ourselves and our business and not have to send so much office taxes. But you can do this very, very legally. But tax evasion is when you start doing it illegally by lying, cheating, or misrepresenting. So you want to stay on the side of tax avoidance as much as you possibly can. It doesn't matter how many times we're not down in business, how many times we're, we're told no. Because as I said last week, we know the 27 times rule teaches us that that customers are going to have to say, or are probably going to say no to us eight times before they say yes on the ninth time. It's just the way it is when you're trying to cultivate and create a, a good long-term raving fan customer. So it doesn't make any difference how many times we'll get knocked down. What makes a big difference is are you willing and able and have the endurance and the mindfulness to stand up and put a smile on your face and be ready to ask those questions again and try to get those orders. Keep getting up. Keep saying, I want your business. I really will work hard to deserve it. Let's see if we can do the business. It's how many times you stand up to get back in the race because staying in the race to the finish line in entrepreneurship is winning the race. So be willing to keep getting up after you, someone says no because as you get started in business, you're going to get a lot of notes. We're writing our legacy every day and how people will remember us uh, when we're past. How people will remember us tomorrow, even as we're here, is important. The entrepreneur who creates the legacy of being a giver and not a taker is the entrepreneur that generally stays in business the longest and holds the admiration and love of their community. A lot of different ways to do this. And so being a giver is a way that I want you really to try to, to, to become uh, that type of entrepreneur. Uh, be willing to give of yourself and your resources to help other people, uh, to help train and teach in very positive ways, and mainly to encourage uh, other folks to be the best person they can be. When you're being the best person you can be, you're letting your light uh, uh, shine, you're letting your candle give off warmth and light. So try to do that. Be the best person you can be. Now, last week, <clears throat> we discussed for the first time, and I laid these words on you, <clears throat> what is the magic marketing moment? Our marketing plans 
plan, our golden goose marketing plan, was all about creating a customer, one that we sold to or that we create a relationship with, and then uh, I'll let them know that we wanted them to be a raving fan by saying to them, I want you to be 100% satisfied, and you'll be so happy that you want to see your family and friends to do business as well. And then once you have a chance to make sure they're 100% satisfied with your follow-up, which is really important, then you'll have, you are in a position to experience the magic marketing moment. That's when you won their confidence. You've let them know that you want them to be 100% satisfied, which fulfills your commitment. And then you would ask them, tell me when you're planning on buying something else. Tell me who you know that might be a good prospect for me. What can I do to make my business better? What products or services do I need to add to what I'm doing so I can better serve you in the future? When you are using the magic marketing moment, you're going to be learning what's next for your business. And if you're planning and you're forecasting correctly, you'll take this information and it'll help your business become sustainable. Sustainable means whether the whether the business cycles are up or down, or the economy's up or down, you'll be able to sustain your business because you'll have what people need and want and a base of raving fan customers that will keep coming back to you no matter how the economy is. Business may not be so good that it'll keep you in business. So you have to remember the magic marketing moment is that is that little slice of pie that makes all the difference in the world when it comes to marketing. Add videotapes to your web pages. I've been doing that this week, uh, and I hope to get good results from it. I'm going to spend time and money doing that, and I consider it an investment for the future, one that has already proven to me adding videos will bring you back a return on your investment. So keep working on your videos, learning how to make them and go forward. So let's get serious. Tomorrow, I'm going to send you about eight or ten emails, and they're going to be examples of different things that we've talked about in marketing and business planning, showing you how to do different things. There'll be examples in here of, of, of videos, the examples of personalized letters that I've written. There'll be examples of, of, of brain seed planning, common denominators. Lots of information will be in these sample emails. So. Don't just delete them all off. I'll save them and read them, uh, copy them, put them in your journal the best way that you can, because these videos I put together for you to help you better understand and use the tools that we've been talking about, and I'm very glad to share. If you, there's an idea in here or something that you can use, I want you to go for it. This is an example of a, a, video, a letter I'm going to send to you that shows you how to insert videos and voiceover messaging and different things that you can do with your videos. And if you have a raw video and you don't know how to do any of these things, if, you, if you'll send them to me, uh, I'll help you with it or I'll help, help ask my, uh, one of my employees to help, uh, help uh, redo your videos to help them a bit become a better marketing tool. Just having the voice and the face is one thing, but when you can start adding pictures and scrolling text and some music, uh, pricing and menus, that's really when your video becomes a marketing tool. So what I saw today, example of this, I've, I've got a new product in my product line that I found a video that is really good for it, and I'm going to take the video that the manufacturer is offering and redo it and make it my video and add these features to it. So uh, uh, we know how to do this. It's not expensive at all. Uh, let me know how. Uh, there would be no, no charge to you whatsoever uh, to, to give you the advice you need. Uh, and if, if I can, I'll do it myself. If it starts getting complicated, I'll just ask the, uh, the contractor to, to talk to you about it if there's any price involved. But usually there is not. Our job tonight is to turn our business marketing plan into a into a magnet, a magnet that brings customers in. 
we don't want to have to constantly be going out and grabbing and spending time and traveling and visiting uh, to earn a customer. However, there's some, sometimes that it is necessary, but most of the time, if we've got a good marketing campaign with the tools that we'll talk about tonight, you'll be able to bring the customers to you and serve them uh, through a good marketing campaign. How do, you know, how, how do we uh, help customers find us and make it easy for them to come and visit with us? That's, that's what we want to do. The first thing I want you to consider doing uh, as you're getting your business started is to have in your mind where do you think you're going to be able to bring the most customers in from? What area can you serve? And as we talked with Sir Wanky earlier tonight about, uh, and you set it up where you can mail out these products, these uh, Valentine baskets that you're uh, doing, and, and she hadn't got to that point there, and that's just fine. But my experience is telling me up front, whatever the cost is to be able to ship your products out across the world, you need to find out the best way to ship them, what the general cost is, because if you ever want to get out of your region, you're going to have to be able to do that. So let's think about making, having a plan, an idea for what we're going to do with our region. So if you're just going to sell in the local market and you're not going to try to stretch out either with service or with product, then you might want to consider this type of marketing uh, tools. Uh, uh, you know, stay within the state 50 to 80 miles. First of all, my business on Google account is going to be very, very helpful for you. Your mobile page uh, or your uh, website or, or Facebook page or your social media, the mobile page is going to be very important. Using social media will be a better investment here than trying to use some items that were used for nationwide. So there's, there's certain things that I'm not going to recommend that you I get heavily involved in if you're just trying to serve your local market. But print ads can become very important for you in local markets and signage. You know, good signage, if you're just trying to serve a, good, a, a certain uh, region, can do a world of work for you. So um, I'll use uh, Sir Wanky again in her work in the Rocky Mount, Roanoke Rapids area. Billboard signs for you are not out of, out of line. Uh, local traffic, let them know you're local and people can pick up local or at local stores may be something you want to consider, as well as print pages, very inexpensive print pages in local publications, such as uh, such as Trader Magazines and things like that. Those, those are not very expensive at all. And as you've already mentioned, uh, uh, keep up your work with your uh, social media. But if you're going statewide, you go statewide, you want to broadcast and go further, then I think you really need to consider adding Google Ads. Google Ads is a separate piece of work with Google that helps you promote your products with photographs and, and spacing. It is very effective, somewhat expensive, but if you're looking at a statewide market, these photographs and the Google Ads can be very effective. I am just now learning to do this. I've tried to do my, my marketing without using that before, and I can see that my competitors now are starting to eat, eat my cake. So I'm very much involved in, uh, in how to do Google Ads. I've set aside a, a, an investment budget to make it happen. I heard some people to help me do it. So in a, in a few weeks, I'll be able to talk to you uh, more like an expert on it than a novice. But I, I recognize how important Google Ads are, and I'll share that with you as we go along. But, Regionally, if you're looking at statewide, your business on Google is a must. Videos are really a must, your mobile page. Social media can still play a big part because you can do a lot of statewide advertising on social media. Some print ads, but not so much unless you've got a special uh, publication that you think really zooms in on your market uh, to make it work for you. Uh, for example, the Vistra magazines that we talked about uh, last week. But now if you're going nationwide, I need to uh, suggest to you, uh, you can take your little business and if you've got the right products, you can go nationwide. And the tools that are in red here can help put you out there and make you just as effective marketing 
in California as, as uh, someone in California that's trying to sell a similar product. You just have to know the ins and outs of it. So nationwide, you've got to get involved with Google Ads now. This is the first time I've ever said that as an instructor, but I believe it because I see it affecting my business every day. And my business on Google account will be very, very effective for you. My business on Google account is like having a separate website that basically free, but it leads you into doing more with Google Ads because they enhance each other. And when you go with Google Ads, you don't have to spend a little bit of money. But uh, mobile page is going to be big time important when you're looking at nationwide as it are videos. And your videos here, especially with YouTube and having your own YouTube channel, will make a lot of difference if you're looking at nationwide sales. Okay, that's basically the uh, planning for the regions. Now let's talk about the target customer groups. Uh, finding those customers, those particular customers that are going to buy from you uh, first and most effectively, several ways to do that. And I want to say to you, uh, in my experience, uh, the most effective way to help them find you, and it's also the least costly way to help them find you, is simply your mobile web page. So when you go on your telephone and try to build up a, uh, an, uh, find yourself, that page that comes up is your mobile web page. And it needs to be designed to really help you get customers to call you right now, uh, not wait. If someone is shopping on the phone for your type of business, you want to encourage them to press a button and call you right now so you can talk to them or they can leave a message or another button where they can send you a text message or an email. This is my uh, mobile web page at carboequipment.com, and you can see how I've done that. Now, let's see, somebody may be calling you after hours and say, well, I'm not going to call. I don't even want to leave a message. Well, if they've got a way easily to punch your button and send you a text message, they will. So look at your mobile page. Look at it yourself and see if it's as powerful as you think it should be. If you have a doubt, then just do a screenshot of it or send me an email or a text message and ask me to check it out and advise. You know, whether I like it or not, or whether you like what I say or not, it won't hurt a bit or cost you a penny to get some free advice. And this is so important. Uh, please consider doing that. How does your mobile page look on the telephone? I've got two or three mobile pages, one for my uh, book sales and uh, one for my equipment company. Now, the next most important effective way to help customers find you, and I'm going to call it the old-fashioned way, are the Raven Fan customers that we talked about last week. The more Raven Fan customers you have, the more people they will send to you free of charge. But you have to motivate. You have to be assertive with your Raven Fan customers by sending them continuous promotions. Now, if you're not sending out continuous promotions, if you're wanky, Tisha, Joanne, Lisa Marie, Miss B, Crystal, Pamela, Kelly, if you are not sending out constant promotions by email to, a, to your database, then it's time to do it. If you're going to take my advice and become serious about marketing your business, you need to start reminding people that you're in business, and especially folks like Kelly and Saranka that are entering a major uh, a buying season for your business. Uh, no doubt about it. And Pamela, you're just a month or so away from the major buying season for your business. So. Think about getting your messages out there on a regular basis, just like I'm sending you emails all the time about my business and what we're doing here. You want to be doing that with your potential customers. Get your database, your list of, 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 of email addresses together. Now, folks that are in North Carolina, if you want me to share some email addresses with you of other entrepreneurs, I'll be glad to do it. So you just have to let me know. The third most effective way and least costly way to get uh, customers to find you, number three, kind of the new fashion way, and we've talked about it a lot, but we'll keep talking about it, 
And that's putting together a plan, just a simple plan, and I call it a star, five-star plan. So look at these individually and see what you are already doing or maybe what you need to do. Google my business account my, or my business on Google, as it's called now, costs you almost no money but can automatically start sending business your way. If you haven't got this account in place, I challenge you right now to do it tomorrow. That's how important it can be for your business to have uh, that uh, my business on Google account in play. How do you find that? You type in Google, you go to their main website, and then type in my business on Google account, and it'll take you through it step by step. Probably take you about an hour, maybe an hour and a half to get it done. You have to feed in some information to it, such as that. But within 24 to 36 hours, you will have your own uh, account set up with a map to your business store uh, and ways to start taking uh, orders, uh, email from customers, and getting reviews as well. So consider doing that. I've, I've seen probably a hundred of, of, of the uh, Academy members, just like yourself, that have come through these uh, seminars and webinars, I get their accounts and automatically report to me. No, no uh, regrets at all. They just love it. Next thing is getting your YouTube uh, videos made and put into your own channel. Your YouTube channel, again, basically costs nothing, and it is a place that people will start finding you and, and getting your message. So. All of you need a welcome message to your business. You, you need that now. Your face, your voice, welcoming people to your business, giving them a little bit of overview from what you do, what you believe in. Keep the message maybe to 25 seconds to 45 seconds long, very short. Get it recorded on YouTube, and then you can get a YouTube channel and start adding your uh, uh, information to it. Now, y'all notice that when I send you these uh, recordings that I'm doing of the webinars, when that recording comes up, you've got a place you can click and like it, and I hope that you will. It's also got a place that you can go to my YouTube channel and become a subscriber. I hope you'll do that. And if you have your own channel, your customers will be able to do the same thing so that every time you come up with a new video, uh, it'll go out to your regular customers and it's the way to keep fresh bait in the water, as we've talked about before. So stop thinking about doing videos, and let's get it done. Stop thinking about it, and let's get it done. And I don't know if I uh, challenge Kelly. She's on board with us tonight. If you haven't got your uh, videos together, and it's such an important time of year for you, and if you want to invite me to come over, I'll help you make a video right in your office and we'll get it up and running before the week's over next week. How about that? How's that for an offer? So finding customers. You want to have as many marketable profit centers as you can. The more you have to offer, the more customer bases you'll be able to find. And when you're coming up with these marketable profit centers, you want them to be uh, uh, so, uh, presented in such a way that you can link them together for upsets, selling your customer one thing and encouraging that customer to move on with something else, another way to make money with them. Once we have these uh, marketable profit centers, we'll be able to talk about the DBAs to do in business ads. We'll talk about that later tonight. And I've been sending you uh, 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 study guides on DBAs for several weeks now. You can take these different products and name them various names that people might type in the search term, what they call them, and that'll really strengthen and magnetize your uh, market ability to bring customers to you. So we'll want to take each one of your market, uh, marketable profit centers and think about, is there a certain group of people that will be more interested in this than other things? And when we have a, a different customer list for each one of our profit centers, you'll be able to send that uh, marketing information right straight to them. That saves money, that saves time, it makes it a lot more powerful to start creating business right now. Feeding your database. Creating a database of customer email addresses is critical 
for you to be able to stay in touch with your with your customers. Do that right now. Look over your uh, clients that you already have, customers that you already know will probably do business with you, or maybe would, or be in a position to recommend you to other people. Get those email addresses and a long list and get ready to send out some promotional material. You'll be able to take the samples that I'm going to email to you and redo those with your with your information. Take mine out, put your information in, and use those samples and ways to get started. But that's that's what it takes. That's what we have to do. SEO stands for search engine optimization, and that is the the go power, the heartbeat of your web presence, of moving your presence from your computer all over the world to someone else's computer. SEO is what makes that happen. We'll talk about it in depth tonight. The SEO works best when you have certain landing pages. Uh, landing pages are where you want to send that customer that's searching for you. You want to send him to a certain web page about that topic, about that marketable profit center. And that is going to be called a landing page, a page where you want them to end up, and that will be where your strongest messages are about let's do business right now. You can have a great website and a great web presence, but if it's not making you money, then it's, in my opinion, it's not so great. How do you get a web page to start making you money? First of all, you consider it a landing page. And the purpose for that page is to get orders. The purpose of that landing page is to generate inquiries. And that means that page needs to be designed to do that. Again, put your pages together. Or if you already have pages you would like to be landing pages, send me a link to them and tell me what the issue is, and maybe I can make some suggestions to you to help you get it more productive for you. Now, I said I'll be sending this to you tonight or in the morning is to your SEO handout. It is very important. The SEO handout is a few pages that I, I, I want you to read maybe several times so that it sinks in. Read it several times so you're, you're beginning to get a good grasp of what internet marketing is all about. And it really it is all about putting your message in front of a particular uh, a customer. And what is the method to do that is SEO, optimizing that web page so that the search engine will find it and send it to your customer. So that this is one of the most important handouts I'll send to you in the whole course. Now, we don't talk about SEO in general terms now because you can go online and click Google for SEO and see millions of people's opinions about this and that. I boiled down what I think were the most important things for a startup company, for a startup company, uh, doing the necessary things to, to really get that present started for your business. Uh, your success is our goal. So I'm not going to bombard you with thousands of things, but I've got I've got scores of things here that we need to talk about. SEO is basically an art form of skills. Uh, and it's all about what is the content on a web page that helps a search engine find your web page versus all your competitions and put it up front to your customer. That's what we have to do. Remember last week I said we had mastered certain forms of this to be to have the top ten top eighteen slots on some search terms. You do that through uh, better SEO management. So let's I dive into that a little bit more. The the there's several uh, factors that when you apply them will result in a much better uh, ranking for your pages. Uh, than if you don't do them. There's nine basic factors that, in my opinion, uh, can move you forward faster than the other uh, issues. Another coach or another instructor may tell you 
he wouldn't do these nine things, he'd do something else or whatever. Usually those people that are teaching you and talking to you about those things have never been in business for themselves and have never invested their dollars to do things. And man, I want to tell you, this industry can tell you so many ways to invest your money for better marketing and advertising that are just throwing away your money. These issues, I think, it will bring you a good a good return on your time investment. None of them will cost you any money, except when you have to go to a webmaster for a little help. First of all, I want to talk about the six things that I think are critical. One is the name of your web page. If up at the top, up at the top on, on the domain name uh, that is uh, telling about your page, if the word that your customer is shopping for is in the name of the page, it's going to be a lot, it's going to be found a lot faster. So naming your web pages are important. And this is going to link to the DBAs because we will name our web pages different names, even if it's the same content down in the page, we'll have a different name for it because our customers use different names when they're shopping for products. Number two, your pages need to be mobile friendly. Some web pages are not friendly to your telephone and some are very friendly. I don't know all the criteria that makes the difference, but I do know that your webmaster will do this. A, profes a professional website builder will have certain software that helps him make your web page mobile friendly. Mobile friendly means he may redesign your mobile page so that the key factors that you want to come up show on the screen on the telephone. But if they don't do that, it doesn't do it. So having mobile friendly web pages is very important. Having videos on your web pages is super important. Google owns YouTube and Google is promoting YouTube and saying that if you have YouTube videos on your web pages, they will come up before any other web pages that do not. So you may have had web pages that have been high performers in years and years and years, but in the last two years, their performance went way down because they didn't have a video. I personally know that during the last two years, when I would uh, put a video on a web page, it would automatically start out performing anything close to what it had done before. So I know this is a fact that will make money for you. Having the right keywords and search terms in the content of the web page is important. If you're shopping for Mitchell's products, if that's the keyword you want someone to type in, Mitchell's products, then on that landing page, you want to have the words Mitchell products in the text as many times as you can put it in there. The more times the words are in the text or the content, the more often the search engine will find it before it does other factors. So I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on how to make that work better for you. You, don't, you do not want to have people come into your website after you spent money, marketing money to get them to come to your website, you don't want people to come to your website and you automatically give them a link to go to someone else's website. Folks do this all the time and it is a major error. You should think about this. You want to keep that customer on your website as long as possible. People have a limited amount of shopping time. And if they're at your site shopping, that means they're not somewhere else. If they're at your site shopping, you have a better chance of getting the order and the money from them. Again, that is why you would want to have a diverse menu of products easily navigated at your website so that you can have lots of links at your website, but they're linking to your web pages, not someone else's. That makes sense, and it's so true. You want to uh, work on your home page so it's easy for them to navigate your home page. And I don't send you a copy of mine because I've worked on this for years and I've learned that having a 
pictorial blocks is really seems to be working well for me the last several years. And my webmaster is telling me that lots and lots of other professional uh, web page builders and businesses come to him and use my uh, website as an example of how to set up a, a home page that is very effective in promoting your profit centers. And number six, and the most important, six most important internal things that you can do, number six is to make sure that your page, your web page, loads, that is, comes up on the screen as quickly as possible. Loading fast is important. You may have, as most people in the North Carolina do, have medium speed or high speed internet. And therefore, when you click on a page, it comes up pretty quickly. But it was just a, a few years ago that we didn't have this. And it took forever sometimes for your computer to, to, to bring up a web page. And over in the United States, there are lots and lots of areas that do not have high speed internet. And there are lots and lots of people that can't get it either, even if they are in a position to pay for it. So how fast your page loads up means whether or not the customers will see it or click on to go somewhere else. Take a, a break here for a minute and turn off the fan because it may be uh, hurting our audio. Be right back. I turned up the heater when I came in, but now I'm realizing the fan's quite loud. Okay, remember, loading speed is important. That, again, is a webmaster function. Usually you don't need a professional to help make sure your pages load as quick as quickly as they can. Now, pay-per-click is a, is a method, a system to use a, a lot of different ways uh, so that customers will uh, see your promotional ad, your sponsored ad to your web pages before they see other people's ads. Uh, and that, that uh, those are sponsored ads that you see uh, on your Google screen, uh, that first group that come up. The higher these people are in the ranking means the more they're paying the search engine to put uh, their ad above other people. Me and you, you and I can pay uh, these companies to put our ads in front of other people, to put our photos in front of other people. We do that on Facebook by boosting our ads. We do that at Bing ads or, or Microsoft ads by paying a certain amount of money per click for someone to come to our page. Google ads that I mentioned earlier is the king of, king of the hill right now in nationwide advertising of products. If you've got products you want to sell nationwide, Google Ads is probably the, the most powerful tool out there to do it, but that's pay for click. They're, they're not only going to put your ad in front of other people, but they're going to put photos. When you click on photos, your photos are going to come up just like a video will. You can do videos and photos uh, and do pay for click on all of those. If you're in the nationwide marketing, that means you, you probably need to have a significant marketing budget and start now learning more about Google Ads. I'll tell you right up front that I know some professional people that have been in business a long time that tried to, to learn Google Ads and how to make it work effectively and just struck out after months and months. So if you decide to go this way, there are some folks that will help you get your account set up and teach you how to do your ads for very reasonable fees. I, can, I, I don't know what price is to you because I'm working with one of them right now and I just told him to make it happen. I've worked with him for 25 plus years. So I think he's just going to charge me about an hour, and I, but I'll know in a month and be able to tell you what it basically takes you from day one. But I've got 40 to 50 profit centers and parts that go with each one of them, so I'll have a large account, 
spend a lot of money, but I'm looking for a good return on investment that I feel like I have to have now because my competitors are using it so effectively. So this help, this is the way to help boost your your uh, uh, your uh, website and your marketing ability. Pay for click. So here's an example pay for click ads. Uh, when you uh, go to Google and you uh, see the different ads, you'll see right here uh, where Carver Equipment Company. That's my company right there. Uh, when you type in Carver, this came up on the screen. One. Two, uh, we were in the top three of the t of, of, on the feed here by using pay for click. Uh, I paid money to get my ads up here. Now down here, where you see car equipment done in C, this came up because of my business on Google account. This was not a pay for click ad. I didn't get here with pay for click. We got here through our, my business on Google account. And you indeed can do that as well. Get good ranking without having to pay for pay for click. The other primary factors that might help you get help customers find you and your web pages is the use of social media. This is where that I want to encourage you to to on your social media ads to refer people back to other places that they can find more of your product. Don't just advertise that one product in one place. If you have the option to send them different links to make them move around the internet, but end up on your pages, that means they're shopping with you and not with someone else. Social media now is a big, big deal, and there are a lot of them uh, platforms out here, and they just keep coming and coming and coming. I know that I want you to be involved in Facebook, and I know that I want you to be involved with YouTube, and, and I, I, I know that there are a lot of others that are very important as well. Instagram now is linked with Facebook and very important. Staying with those and learning all there is to know about it will take up so much of your time, you may lose focus about how to uh, really promote your business in the, in the woods instead of just on that one tree. So give that some thought. Uh, uh, be good at what you're doing on, on one uh, one platform, but please try to make sure that you are involved with Facebook and with YouTube because I know from personal experience those are good investments of time and will bring you in good results in, in just a across the board effort. I've mentioned a webmaster a lot. That's the term that I've kind of used. Uh, a website developer means the same thing. Someone that's in the create website creation or maintenance business. Uh, find someone in your area that you can talk to and you feel good about. If you're trying to learn and do this as you go yourself, you're probably going to use up a lot of valuable time learning a trade that someone else can do it for you at a very reasonable cost and free you up to promote your business in other ways that will bring you more investment coming in. So. Don't be ashamed to say I've got someone helping me with my marketing and my web work and my social media work. Uh, I did that. I got tired of trying to do it all myself and using up so much time. So I have someone that helps me with that uh, and very reasonably priced. And uh, I'm seeing some significant pro progress on that. So using the right keywords and search terms are very, very critical. It is, uh, it is so powerful in helping people find you that you just have to, to accept it as fact and move forward with it. Uh, I really appreciate all of y'all joining us tonight. It's good to have you on board, uh, and I, I, I hope you're enjoying the presentation. This is, this is digging deep into marketing, uh, uh, helping customers find you, but it is it's just a fact. It's something that we have to learn to do. Now, I mentioned that uh, SEO means having the right keywords, the right text on your pages. Now, the, uh, your pages are put together with photographs and, 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 and text messaging and videos. All those three things are, are considered to be content of a page, and your content is very important. The Using the 
the uh, the words that people are shopping for in, on that web page as a part of the text is the critical way that the search engines are going to find you. So I don't say to you that you don't have to sit at your desk and dream up individually one at a time all the keywords that apply to your particular profit center because you can go to Google just like on this page that's here and type in keywords and search terms and indeed you will see just as I've got posted on the screen here website after website that will give you keywords and search terms free by the thousands by the thousands so you can you can get a lot of help very quickly on, uh, on choosing the, the words for your pages now here's an example of one of them I use the example shoes running shoes uh, as if that's one of the type of shoes I was going to sell in my store and ask them ask the website to tell me all the keywords that are being used to help people find running shoes and not only do they give you a list as, as you're looking at here on the screen of, of one after the other they will tell you how many people per day are using this search term versus another so if you on this particular day if someone is looking for running shoes and they type in Brooks shoes on that particular day 280,000 people typed in Brooks shoes while looking for running shoes as they give you the number of them right here that's how many on the average per day if just shop it just typing in running shoes which amazed me 226,000 600 and some type in running shoes even though that's what they were, that's what they were looking for but at Brooks shoes more people did that so some keywords are going to be more important than the actual search term that you're thinking about and to get that information you all you have to do is go to different websites on the internet and it's free provided to you then you know which words to use more and more often in the content of your page now when you do that using those content pages uh, knowing that's a key you can load you can load your web pages with lots of content words that are just there to help you uh, to, he to help your SEO situation now look down at the bottom of this web page and I've got shown here this is one of my web pages and I've just basically come up with, with my different profit centers I uh, came up with some different towns but mainly the different profit centers that people might type in in some of the towns and just put them in a group of text words and added them at the bottom of the page no one cares no one will read that no one will, cares about understanding why I've got that down there is help you I want you to understand why I've got that group of words in the text down there I've got it there so that I have loaded that page with certain keywords in the text so the SEO uh, uh, search engines will find it in front of my com competitors and on different pages I'll use different words and different content but you can load in very small print uh, no one's going to ever read it except the search engines it's strictly there as bait for the search engines you can do that as well makes your pages very much more powerful notice that uh, you know, on this particular web page down at the bottom of it I've listed it up with different local towns in North Carolina remember I mentioned regionally a while ago this is basically looking at I want to improve my position with the North Carolina shopper by listing down lots of towns in the area because if you're shopping on the internet on your telephone and you're in the Rocky Mount area if a web page has the word Rocky Mount written on it no matter what else it has written on it it's liable to come right up you noticed this before and wondered say you type in one search term and on your phone or even on Google these other things came up but mainly on your telephone other websites have come up that don't have anything to do with the search term you typed in but they probably have a store or a link in the area that you're traveling in that's right 
uh, when people are shopping, remember that saying you want to see a, a restaurant near you, you want to see a hospital near you. What they're doing is picking up this content off web pages and sends that advertising right straight to them. So it's very, very important that you consider adding these to your web pages, mainly landing pages. Here's another example of just loading up uh, 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 different uh, text words, search term words of your profit centers uh, on the bottoms uh, in blocks on the bottom of your web pages. Now let's talk about the landing page again. The landing page is the, the spot that we want to direct our shopper to. He's typed in a search term, now we want to grab that, um, that search and send it right straight to one of our pages. When 35 years ago when internet shopping just started getting started, everybody talked about, hey, I want people to come to my website and hang around and surf for a while. I want you to enjoy visiting my website as if you were sending them to a resort on the internet. Visit my website and surf around and see what all we have. Uh, we were all involved in trying to make it feel good. And so she said, I even have music pages with beach music uh, pages on a lot of my, my web pages. So if somebody click on an item, uh, they could pick out the, the, uh, the beach tune, the beach music tune they wanted to play, and it would play as, their, as they were uh, shopping. <laughs> well, I had that for a year or two, and then I, I, I got enough of feedback back saying, Steve, uh, Please take the music off your page. I like to look at your pages at work, but I don't want my fellow workers hearing this music because they know I'm not <laughs> not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So, so, so that that was pretty pretty darn amazing. So there's certain things that you don't want to do that feel make it feel good to you, but do nothing to do to help you make sales. But when you have the pages that you want to send them to, we're gonna call those the landing pages. And when I started out talking, I said that was the third most important consideration you want to do, is the landing pages. So I, I see there's a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, chat on chat, so y'all keep it up, talk with each other. Uh, at the end of the program, I'll take time to read it. However, if you want to interrupt me and say something or ask a question, uh, you can do that. You can turn your own mic on and, or put a hand up, and we'll, we'll do that. Now, your landing pages... They're hot. They are the primary cutting point to where or not you're going to make money. You want that landing page that you have worked hard to send people to, to encourage people to buy now, to send you a message, to ask the question, to want a quotation, to feel like, hey, I have found the right place. Finally, I found someone on the Internet that's got the right content, the right price, the right information and I'm ready to order now from them. And this is the place where it, it, in our, our circle of always connecting the dots, this is the place on the internet, on our landing page, where we do not want to say, take it or leave it. So important. When you're developing your landing page, ask yourself, am I saying take it or leave it? Or am I giving my customer options? Options to, for them to help determine their own price, to let them know that something is negotiable here, that they can order it now. They can see I've already discounted it, but still, if they want to pay a different method, they can pay different prices. If they want to pay with a, 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 a credit card versus sending a check, they can pay with different prices. If they want to buy at retail and pay top dollar, which of course nobody does, or if they want to buy it on eBay or, or some other way, you've got options. And the mere fact that I've got options here, most of the time will take that customer out of the market for you if you're reasonably priced, and they'll go ahead and pursue negotiating with you and coming up with the best deal they can. Negotiating for how we're going to ship it, whether it's assembled or not, uh, lots of different ways to make sure you're not saying, this is not take it or leave it. This is negotiable. That's easy, and you don't have to you don't have to put those words on your web page. You just have to offer them options, and you're sending the nonverbal message by doing that. 
your web pages are critical. If you have web pages that are not making you money, again, send me a link to them, tell me what the issues are, and I'll be glad to offer suggestions. Okay? Now take a look, if you can, uh, it looks like most of your own uh, devices where you can see these slides. Take a look at this slide and see how many times I've got the words drum mower, I've got the words uh, TX31 twine baler, I've got the words disc mower. These words are on here lots of times, one right after the other. Now I could have set up this text, I could have set up this content without using the same words over and over just by listing things down differently and grouping them differently. And some folks would say, well, that's what you should have done, Steve. That would have made it a lot easier to read and look at. But using the same words over and over and over again on the same page, I had my content jam-packed with what I felt were the search terms for that page and therefore make it much more effective to be found on the Internet. Think about that as you're setting up your landing pages. Now, number 10, when it comes to finding customers, whether it's Internet or not, location, location, location has been the three words that we've always heard in marketing forever, and they still are very important. So we got to talk about them in this class tonight because everything that we do, location needs to be somewhere in the mix. If it's a store, what's that store location? If it's placing a sign, what is that sign location? Merchandising inside of our store or merchandising on our web page, the location that we put different items may be much more important uh, for some items than another. Uh, uh, our print ads, where our print ads are, are placed in a magazine. I'd come through the years, and I still believe coming through the years, that if my, if my ad can't be on the inside front cover of a magazine, or page three, which would be the first page you look at when you open it up, or if it can't be on the rear cover or inside rear cover, I'm probably not going to buy an ad in that publication. I know that those ads cost me more because most people have a, a, a premium for placement of your pages. But if you're not at the right place, sometimes you're better off not even to waste your money to have be stuck somewhere in the middle of the book. There are some exceptions to this, and sometimes pricing just nails you to it. But usually, location in a print magazine or a newspaper is so important you want to be there. Ironically, with some type of advertising in a newspaper, your ad in the classified, which are the least expensive ads you can buy in the newspaper, may be the ones that you want to use as part of your long-term marketing campaign that you've got to add there all the time, at least once a week. What that does is helps you with your 27 times rule, which means that when you do put an ad in that's uh, really important to you, you don't have to really blow it up as big because people are used to seeing your ads and accept it uh, as being uh, real and valid instead of something that's just there one time. If you got little ads running all the time for the long term, you're a part of the community. And when you put a little bit larger ad in, it will be recognized as valid. Even if it's person to person, where you stand in the room, where you stand beside someone, uh, where you sit at the table with someone, uh, is, is important. Where you are as a uh, entrepreneur or leader in your community. Are you at church? Are you at the uh, high school ball game? Are you at funerals? Seeing and being seen as a small business entrepreneur, especially one just getting started, is very important. Because when you are seen uh, at the same place as your potential customers are, you've got a common denominator. They recognize you, they recognize that you have the same interests they do, and they're more likely to give business to you. <laughs> Entrepreneurship, you can't be one right by yourself. We gotta have customers, we gotta have vendors, we need Raven fan customers. Locating yourself, your business, your ads, 
locating your signs all tie into that big ingredients in that piece of cake for a sustainable business. So we have to see and be seen on the internet, in the YouTubes, and in the community. Now let's talk about a five-star plan to help customers find you. Each and every one of you that are ready to do business, take notice. Identify your profit centers and make sure you have upsell connections with those. Some of you have already sent them to me. The rest of you, please send me your five profit centers and let's see if they can connect with upsells. When is your sales, your primary sales season, when would it start and finish? Think about what is the seasonal ability of your business. And do you have items that will be coming and going all through the year so you'll have a sustainable 12-month business? If you've got something coming up within 60 days, it's time to put a marketing plan together. Let's get started on it like we talked about last week. Get your pricing and your discounting and your targeting strategies worked out. Look at your items to see what might, your upsell items, see how they might be bundled so you can have some bundled package pricing. Uh, uh, let's see. Mr. Wanky, you mentioned Valentine's season and selling baskets. So I want to encourage you to have a mama and daughter bundle package so that the husband or the grandpa can call you up or send you an email and in one price send, send, uh, send grandma and daughter and granddaughter uh, a, a Valentine uh, basket. One deal, one bit bundle price, save a little money. That's what you need to figure out. How to put your packages together. Okay, thank you. I'm writing that down. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Now, the more packages and bundle deals you can put together now, the better you'll be able to do it with each season. And if people like what you're getting at Valentine's, you know what? You got Mother's Day coming. You got Fourth of July or vacation season coming. Right after that, you move into the fall seasons. If you can create a happy customer with a bundle package now, there's a good chance you can create a sale every time a new season comes by, provided you've got their email address and you're sending them promotions on a constant basis. That's, that's, we create our Raven fan, repeat customers by doing that. Now, along with this, we need to be doing videos all the time. Not just one time a year, not just one time because you're starting your business, but you w promote your, your products through videos and make them fresh. The key to catching fish is keeping fresh bait in the water. The key to uh, creating more sales is having fresh videos and promotions. Got to remember that. The look and hook features that we talked about last week mean that when we create a promotion, a video, an ad, it needs to look good. And it needs to have a hook factor. The hook factor is something that's encouraging someone to order right now. Now, of course, with the Valentine package, that factor is you don't have to talk about it. People know that if you want to get this present before Valentine's on the 14th, you need to, I need to have your order and your money by the 10th or the 9th to be able to make sure you've got time to pick it or, or for it to be shipped or for you to make it. And you also would want to say, Mr. Wanky, that limited, uh, limited stock is available, so order now because you don't know if you'll be able to get all the materials you need to get to put your packages together. And then you got your plan. It's time to put it out there in the world. Let's send it out the emails. Let's get our advertising working, uh, uh, make marketing uh, uh, pay for it, and, and, uh, and, and move forward. So that would be the plan, what we're going to do. So let's come up with a five-star way of making it happen. One, let's get our website up and running and make sure it's mobile friendly and we've worked on our landing pages. Let's get involved with Facebook 
uh, and get some business pages on Facebook and let them start make, selling for you. Put your email uh, campaign together with different email addresses and start letting people know. Now, there are ways that you can uh, send out lots of email very easily and very inexpensively through some of these companies that I didn't believe in for a few years because I didn't want to give anybody else my email or mailing addresses. But I've been using them now for two years and very happy. I've chosen to go with MailChimp. Uh, uh, my associate says it's very easy to use and she takes care of it for me. There are people that will handle your mailing list for you and do your emails uh, physically and send them out for you. All you have to do is design the email and tell them when you want it to be mailed. Uh, six months in advance, you can give them all the dates you want to, like we talked about last week. Places like eBay and Craigslist may suit your particular product or services quite well. And again, as I've mentioned already six times, having your YouTube channel is like having a free website that is very, very effective. So that's, that's the plan. Uh, this can happen for you if you decide to put it to work. So, reach customer group. Each one of our targeted customer groups that we've talked about now for several weeks. We would want to select a media, a method to implement it, and if there's any guerrilla marketing strategies we can throw to in, we would do that. So as you come up with your target customer groups, and you're welcome to send me those lists as well. I encourage you to do that. I'll help. Uh, I'll look them over very carefully and give you some feedback on them. Then we would come up with the media and the method to get to them and start making some money. There's a major problem here that you can make that will make it very difficult for you to reach your full potential. And that is let a, a group fall through the crack that you do not give this the kind of thought and consideration that you need to give it and let someone fall through the crack. Because when you do that, you're limiting how much you can grow and, 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 and move forward. So have you ever been around a brick mason or a group of brick masons that are laying brick? As they are laying that brick, after they put each one of them in place and they get ready to leave it, you'll hear, you'll hear a tap. Usually it's a double tap on each brick. Now, why do they do that? If they lay, lay in 10,000 bricks a day, every mason that puts a brick down before he leaves it, they take their trial, hit it. Why are they doing that? They are setting, it's called setting the brick in place. Air out, making sure there's a good seal and a good bond with each brick. As small business entrepreneurs, we need to consider each customer like a brick. And when we have the opportunity to seal that bond, to make sure that we understand each other, that we're heading in the right direction, uh, we've got a good communication link to work out any details, then you've got a good chance to, to, first of all, win a customer, but most of all, create a raving fan. Because part of setting that brick might be to say, I want to make sure you're 100% satisfied so that you'll send your neighbors and your friends to me. That's right. So very important. Set that brick with every customer one at a time. We build our businesses one customer at a time. Now, these two racehorses have run as hard as they can run. But one of the racehorses is four inches ahead of the other one. One back there in the back. He's going to win the race in a photo finish by four inches after running around a mile and a half track. That jockey over there with the yellow hat on, he knew one thing to do. One way to pit his horse or one way to nuzzle it forward or one way to sit on it or get down for wind resistance. He knew one thing to do to encourage his horse to be a nose in front of the other. And he won a million dollars, and the other horse won a bale of hay. In your business, do you want to be the entrepreneur that wins the million dollars? 
or the one that gets the bale of hay. A very important part of this is going to be how you make sure that you're staying in touch with your customers one at a time and not taking any of them for granted. Because so in entrepreneurship, especially startups, maybe you're looking at your uh, month-end report or your year-end report, and it's red ink. You're losing some money. But if you have one more customer a month, or one more customer this week, you'd have been in black ink, you'd have been in profitability. We have to appreciate the fact that our customers that are bringing us $10 at a time are very, very important. Our customers that are bringing us $100 at a time, they're very, very important. Our customers that are bringing us $100,000 are very, very important that when we start saying to ourselves, well, this group of customers is no longer important to me because I've got this group over here that's bringing me in all this money. That's when we get in trouble. We want to appreciate the large customer that's bringing us lots of money and the little customer that's bringing us lots of money. But what we're trying to achieve with them is sustainability. Keep it coming because that Two or three of those customers bring you $100 may make the difference in your year-end report being profitable or not. And it's not just about the report. It's about are you managing your business as best you can because there will be years that you're, gonna, you're, you're not going to show such a great profit margin. And sometimes that's just fine depending on how your books are set up. But you want to know in your mind that you are dealing with all the customers and doing all you can to maintain the series growth by staying in good communication with them. What does your group of target customers look like? Have you actually spent some time on this on a piece of paper or a computer file to list down a group of customers that you want to put together a marketing campaign for? And every business will be different. Maybe you're in a vacation area, so it's vacationers that you want to serve. Or maybe you're down in Jacksonville, North Carolina area, and you want to basically focus on marine families. Or maybe it's all over the United States, outside of North Carolina. Or maybe I just want to do all I can with people that are shopping on the telephone. Whatever your group of customers are, notice that I've got a target and three arrows. The target is where you name your customers group and then you start listing them. The arrows represent the method, the media, and is there some grill activity we can use to help us here. Every one of us need to be doing this all the time. So let's say we're talking about uh, one of our groups and all of us probably have this, is people shopping on the telephone. So how do you how do you do best for people shopping on the telephone? Have a web presence and have that web presence projected to the to the telephone with your mobile page. It's just that simple. You got to get to them through your media, uh, your web presence, or your social media, and turn that into a, a a link that goes to the telephone and what that mobile page looks like is so important to you. That was number one when we started tonight, and it's still number one. New customers, man, they are so good. People that are new to a community have, or don't have allegiance to anyone else. People that are new to the community are shopping for a new vendor or a supplier or someone to help them with their taxes. They don't want to do business with over the internet. They want to come talk with a local person, uh, a, a florist the same way. So people that are new to the community, you really want to focus on those if it suits your, your type of business. Miss D, this would apply to you. Pamela, it applies to you. Kelly, it certainly applies to you. And JR, you as well. It's very important that you have in your mind, how can I best be in touch with people that are new to the community? Well, everything we've talked about on Google tonight, SEO terms are very important. A relocation magazine, 
uh, for each community. They're out there. That may be a place you want to advertise. You may want to get in touch with the Chamber of Commerce, Welcome Wagon, a lot of different ways to, to be in touch with folks that are new to the community because they will, may be the very easiest folks that you can re, uh, recruit uh, and win as, a, as your customer. Uh, visitors coming through your area, certain ways to contact them. If you want to go outside of North Carolina, then we don't, as we talked about earlier, I gave you those basic tools, which include Google Ads, My Business on Google, YouTube channels. This is so very important. Those three will be for you. Now, there are some folks, I call them the dream customers, that are not searching for you. They're very happy with who they're doing business with now and don't care whether your business makes it or not. Not that they're bad people, but there are some folks that you need and you want and you know who they are that could probably be a great customer for you. So I'll mention uh, uh, Sri Lankington uh, as an example. She don't mind me using it, I don't think. <clears throat> you have gift baskets and, and uh, uh, nice promotional type items. You might call on a customer a retail customer or a service provider like an oil company or, or a, uh, a, a local distributor of some type, a plumbing distributor, you might put together a package to say to, to uh, businesses, here are some options that you may choose as gifts or promotional items for your customers. Or you may have customers that you know their birthdays and you would like someone to send them a birthday package on your behalf. Now, I, this may sound like it's out in right field, but things can be refined to make it work. So you can go to people and use your products to help promote their business. And when you can put together that type of thing, it's a good idea to do it. So think about people who are not uh, it used to buy in your uh, products or services and figure out a way that you can put together a plan to nail them down. It's really important. So I mentioned earlier, a good way to find customers is to be in front of them is to go mobile with pop-up tents, uh, displays, and booths. And again, one of our uh, uh, entrepreneur associates here, uh, Janae, is in, in charge of the vendor activities at the White Lake Water Festival, which comes up in May. And if that is something you may have an interest in, just write it in chat and I'll have Renee send you the information. <clears throat> also, if you are into pop-ups and events and particularly don't care about White Lake, there are several publications and several uh, uh, websites that you can go to that will tell you where all the uh, events, street fairs, community events, and things like that are going on across the state, so you'll know where and when you might want to go to to set up your uh, your advertising or your pop-up. I'll be glad to share that with you as well. As a matter of fact, it's in your uh, it's in your handout. I'll be sending it to you. But there's a website that you can go to and say called the North Carolina Festivals and Events. NC Festivals and Events, a very good website that you can subscribe to, doesn't cost you any money, <clears throat> that will keep you updated on what's happening in different places. Now, you may be a part of someone that's sponsoring an event, and you want to make sure that you are listed in, in this so that folks will come and see you and do advertising for you. Glad to share this. We just first time been able to do this. But it'll take you out from the, what's happening today versus next week and go forward, for example. Tomorrow, uh, the, the 2nd of February, there's going to be an event in Salisbury called the About Wine, uh, Wine About Winter in Salisbury. And it'll give you lots of details, and it goes right down on a, uh, on a calendar date. <clears throat> Again, what are the three things that you want to consider for each target group? Media, method, and are there some guerrilla activities that you can do? If you're not sure about the guerrilla activities for your type of customer and your type of product, drop me a note. I'll help you brainstorm on that. 
different media that you could be using, the World Wide Web, of course, cell phones, print, and social. And signs for local, if you want to serve your local market, signage is very effective. And, of course, there's hundreds of different types of signs that you can put up and promotions. But leave them in, in your uh, in your category. Here's some examples I'll share with you, gorilla ideas. Lots of times in your community or rural areas or small towns, there are, there are signs sticking up that people haven't used or updated in years. And they may be sitting on a vacant property or out in the field. Many uh, folks will go to these uh, landowners and say, you know, if you'll let me use that sign for a year or two, I'll fix it up. And, uh, and then rent it from you for a reasonable price. And sometimes they'll just say, you go fix it up and help yourself to it. I'll be glad to help get your new business started. Uh, you, depending on what you're selling or offering, you might offer them a discount or a free this or that for the use of that sign for several years. Easy, good investments. Over here on the right, you'll see just a, a little piece of paper that's folded and put over the flag on a mailbox. That is so inexpensive to make. That's, you can do a, take one sheet of paper uh, to make one flag, or you can take one sheet of paper and make three flags if you want to cut them and fold them. But that is good advertising for a, a, a cleaning service, a grass mowing business, painters, housekeepers, uh, 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 people that's putting out farm uh, or grass chemicals and things like that. Anything for local neighborhoods. That is a very inexpensive way to get your message out there. I don't suggest you do all the town at one time, do it one neighborhood at a time. Somebody may complain, somebody may gripe. Let them complain or gripe. You got a business to grow. Most people will be glad to see you do this. Uh, it is not against the law putting that putting that uh, flyer inside the mailbox. That's a no-no. But you can hang it on the flag and you'll be perfectly okay law-wise. I think, <laughs> I don't need to offer any guarantees on that, but I think. Local communities and local businesses sometimes can do co-op on billboards. Very inexpensive way to get big, bold advertising messages out. Give it some thought. Maybe several of you in one community uh, might consider doing this, uh, getting your name and your message out there in a very good way. Pop. 12 out of 20, all 20 are listed in your handout, the different methods to use. Make sure you got the right profit centers. Most likely, in the most likely customer groups that would use that, pro that, uh, that product. Look after your Raven fan customers and make sure you've got a database listing for them. Because you will want to send them uh, promotions all the time. Know your product line so that you can make a good introduction and start selling right off the, the basis. Know the presentations that you need to have. Uh, uh, do your homework. Do your practicing. And again, doing your uh, 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 YouTube videos, presenting these products is a good way to learn it. Have a website. Have, be on social media. Know the best times of day to be there. It's important that you put your ads up at the right time of day. Now on Facebook, the way they do the streaming, uh, if you're putting your, your, your ads up during the night and such as that, uh, they're going to be way down the list when someone gets up the next morning and see what the last thing that's up on their sheet is. So generally, you want to post that, uh, post your ads or your presentations at the time of day that you think most people will be looking uh, at their Facebook or social media presentations. Use written testimonials all that you can. Uh, uh, have people give you good testimonials. I would invite y'all, please, y'all please send me good testimonials because I use them. That really helps you with, uh, with um, customers that have anxiety about doing business with you. <clears throat> One of my competitors uh, put together a nice uh, start up your business handout or, or a, a manual book. Uh, it just came out a few weeks ago. I purchased it. I looked at it, and it is absolutely great. I know how hard it is to print a book and get it to print, and this, uh, this product that she has done is amazing. 
and I'll recommend it to every entrepreneur. I'm going to use it myself in my business and recommend it to, to all of you in the future when, I, when she gives me the authority to do that. And I'll be glad to write her all the testimonials she wants. There's nothing wrong with giving praise to someone that is your competitor. Indeed, there's enough business out here for all of us, and when you see something good, let it know. <clears throat> me offering her product is going to give credibility to me because it's a good product. I don't have anything like it, and I don't think anyone else does. So I'll be glad to send her testimonials on and help promote her product because I think it will really help you guys as well. Search engine optimization. SEO, do you know what it means now and how it can help you? Very important. Uh, remember that you want to make calls, knock on the doors of customers that you really need their business and probably are not going to get uh, to know them unless you go see them face to face. Know what referrals can do for you. Brand uh, and, and name your labels with your DBAs. Have that Google locator map as a good strategy for your helping customers find you. <clears throat> Here's the Google locator map right here on my screen, on my, on my home page. See where the cursor is? Now, on my map, I'm not sending that customer here to my office. I'm giving them a map to where they go pick up equipment, where it's shipped from. So you've got some flexibility on how you do that. And, um, it's very easy to use. Guerrilla marketing tactics, there's 20 of them. We don't talk about the top seven. Using DBAs, doing business ads, number one. Using Facebook and eBay ads, number two. Have plenty of testimonials and hospitality messaging and photos. That's guerrilla marketing to make people feel good about doing business with you. The little things that you do to make people feel good and trust you. Uh, more, uh, see the handout that I'll be sending to you for lots more. Now, I've used the term DBA a lot tonight, and maybe you uh, don't know exactly what I'm talking about. But the best example I can think of is Kellogg's. Uh, Kellogg's is a brand that's been around since the 20s, maybe even before that, but I think maybe the 20s and 30s. And when you go to the cereal aisle, the breakfast food aisle, at any uh, uh, grocery store, you're going to see the 60 to 80 catalog DBAs right in front of you. One company, lots of products, basic same product in each box with just a little bit of change, but a different name. And that different name is the different doing business as for that company. The using DBAs don't cost you any extra money at all. It helps make you money. Now, DBAs for products is what I'm talking about now. DBAs for naming your company is a whole different ball game with a whole different set of strategies and advantages. But right now, I'm talking about marketing your DBAs by branding with DBAs, uh, by private labels, and learning to promote the same product with different names to different target customer groups. Your Facebook and eBay pages may be very good tools for you, depending on what you're selling, to bring customers to your website. I use uh, this as a good example at, uh, at Facebook. I use Facebook ads. I get my different web page names in here because people, some people shop at Facebook, they don't shop anywhere else. And if they see one of my ads, I don't lead them to a certain landing page at my website. Do the same thing at, uh, at eBay. You can buy inexpensive eBay ads for a, for a very low price and then put your uh, website links in there or information how to find you or at least your telephone number. So people that are shopping on eBay, you're encouraging them not actually to buy here, but to give you a call and negotiate a really good price. Lots of different, lots of different ways to, to make that work for you. Testimonials are five star. Testimonials are a good way to bring people to you. I believe in it. At the top of each of my web pages, if you go to CarverEquipment.com, 
this area right here is a slide. It's a slideshow. And one of the slideshows actually is encouraging people to go read my testimonials as they got that finger pointing down so that when they click right here, they go to my testimonial pages, which are full of several hundreds and 10 years worth of, uh, of testimonials. So have a different plan for each one of your customer groups. Find out who they are, list them down, talk about them, send them to me, I'll help you with it. But know that marketing, it, when it's structured, works. Marketing, when you're just flying it by the seat of your pants or whatever feels good, usually you're going to waste a lot of money and not get much benefit out of it. So know that you want to use the media, the method, the guerrilla marketing to promote for each different target group and make it work. All of them are important, and you want to remember that. Going outside of North Carolina, different set of strategies. Pay for click may help you. Google Ads may make a major difference, but videos and your YouTube channel will be huge, good investments of time to bring back a return. Now, so those customers that you're going to need to make cold calls to, and in this day and time, people don't like to hear the word cold calls, but if you want to grow your business, it may be a type of business that you need to get out and knock on some doors to let people know you're here and well. And when you start knocking on doors, you're going to come in touch with people that I call the gatekeepers. That's the receptionist or the people at the front door that says, no, we don't need anything. Go away. We don't want to see any salespeople in here. Uh, no soliciting in here. Just go away, go away, go away. And we learn to hate these people because they're keeping you away from the decision maker you need to talk to. We learn just to hate them so bad that we're just going to stop making cold calls because it's just not fun. And now I've already told you that you're probably going to get told no nine times. That doesn't encourage you either, does it? Well, here's the other side of the story. There are some customers that are so vital to your uh, sustainability, you need to make the investment. So make a list of that six to nine customers that you know of that could probably help your business a lot. Make that list and then get your calendar out and say, I'm going to visit these people on the, on the first Tuesday of every month for the next six months. Or whatever the visitation plan is, structure it. And then you start visiting just to say, hey, I know you I said you didn't need anything last time, but I want to let you know I'm still here. And if something changes where I can serve you, let's do it. Here's a sample. Here's a program. Here's a menu. That's why you need to have something in your hand. And you get to know these folks that you're talking to first name. And when you go back to your car, you get your journal out and you write down who it was you were talking to and something you remembered about them. Be friendly, be smiling, be short. Don't take up a lot of time. So that when you show up in the next month or next six weeks, they will remember your face, maybe not your name, but you've got business cards to hand to them. And they will not be mad at you for coming back because you're pleasant. And you're just there to say, hey, I'm just still here knocking on these doors and when they get a chance to do some business, let's do it. And one day, let me tell you what may happen. Sally's sitting down at the front desk that you've been talking to for a while. Her boss comes out and says, you know, Sally, we need to find someone that we can do some promotional work with to help us send out some gifts to customers or someone that will mow our grass or, or, a, or, or a security service. Uh, a painter. We need to find someone that's going to do this for us because the person we've been doing business with for all these years has retired or died or moved away. And Sally's sitting down at the front desk saying, well, Mr. Steve, you know, uh, Miss D has been coming by here for the last six months or so. She's a nice lady. Says she can handle this work and would appreciate the opportunity. You want me to give her a call? And Mr. Steve would say, absolutely, bring Miss V on in here. Let's see what we can do. The gatekeepers are not your enemies. There's a good chance the gatekeepers will become your raving fan 
and indeed open the door so you'll get a chance to talk to this customer. So much new business is created this way, it's incredible for those people that are willing to make cold calls. And they go back and back and back repetitively to, to, to get in line to do business. There's a, there's a good old saying that some business you're not going to get till somebody dies, moves, or passes. That's very true here. If it applies to your business, you take this very seriously. So forecasting and marketing is important. Helping customers find you means that you are prepared to serve them. Every day you need to look at your product line and what you're offering and make sure you've got items that suit the season, suit the market, and suit your customers. Spring is right around the corner. Have you already ordered in the merchandise that you need in your business or are you, are you, set, are you ready to sell it? Lawn and garden season is only a month after that. So Pamela, if you've got people coming to your location that's into lawn, gardens, and vegetables, you may have the perfect opportunity to do some retailing of some other type of impulse type products that people might buy. July 4th is after that, so all types of marketing stuff for freedom items. After summer, we've got all of them coming in. What can you do to uh, create and bring people to you for the season? And then Christmas is right there, and it goes on. Some stores, that's all they actually sell. With a store like this, maybe suits you with what you're doing. Uh, one of my favorite places that I've ever been to watch people market this so well is Maggie Valley, North Carolina. It's 25 miles or 30 miles west of, uh, of Asheville, uh, right in the Waynesville community. This is big Apple country, and these folks know how to do it. Look at some of these displays. Absolutely incredible that they're set up to do that marketing business up there. And I was so happy to go up there and do it. All these impulse items they got out front, each and every one of them, pretty much they are tripling their money on them, or at least doubling their money on, on, on all of these items. And if you have an interest in any of these type of impulse items, I, I've got the, the way to get in touch with the manufacturer, and you can order them yourself, and, or maybe even share an order with some other people to, to use at pop-ups and street events, or to use at your store or location to help make them work. But generally, that's good money, and it's the right time of year for you to be thinking about it. Plan your annual seasonal work now. Look through all your seasons and what you can add in your business or do in your business to enjoy 12 months a year of business. So you've got to have a mobile page, and it needs to look good. You need to be on Google My Business account. Make sure you've done your landing pages work and you're working on your testimonials and your YouTube videos. Follow up. Follow up with your customer when you talk to them and find that magic marketing moment to build your marketing campaign. Get your profit centers listed down, which customer groups going to go with them, how you going to put them together to reach out to them, and then start selling. Have your bright ideas go to work. And bright ideas are best worked out during the cold winter months now when business isn't popping, but it's getting ready to. So make sure you are ready and doing all that you can do now by keeping your spirits high, smiling, being happy, and knowing that if your ship doesn't come in, if your ship just doesn't come in and goes by the dock, be ready to jump in and swim out to it. In other words, we just might have to get wet. Uh, and if that's what it takes, uh, uh, let's, let's go for it. I'm getting wet right now. My seasons are getting ready to pop. It's slow right now, but I'm not sitting here at my desk uh, moaning and groaning. I'm marketing, doing all these things that I'm suggesting to y'all. So I'm right in the mix of it. So if you call and ask a question or send me a note, I'll be glad to, to jump right in there with you as well. How can we help customers find us? Have a candle. Hold it up high so people can see the light and people can feel the warmth that you're putting out. That's that hospitality factor, and it can bring them back to you time after time. So thank you so much. Uh, great uh, presentation with all of you here. We've got a good crowd tonight. Let me invite you to turn your mics on if you'd like and ask any questions. I'd uh, appreciate your comments, and again, so glad to have you all with us tonight. And, uh, 
If you want me to send anything to you, uh, put it in the chat board over here, and I'll be glad to do that. So thank you so much for joining us. Any comments? Thank you, Steve. I enjoyed the class tonight. Well, I appreciate you calling up there from New York. Uh, how's your weather in New York today? Anyone else? Hey, Coach Steve-O. Hey there. How was your weather in New York today? It's actually good. It's like it's fall season type. It's all well, good. 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 I appreciate you being with us and your continuing uh, present uh, performances. Thank you. Um, by the way, um, how you pronounce my name, remember, is Duce Maria, not Duce Marie. Duce Maria. I got to work on that. That's that's new to this North Carolina boy, but I'll I'll keep working on it. <laughs> Thank you, Thank sir. You. I appreciate Thanks. you and this um this workshop. Have a great Thank day you. and a weekend. You as well. All right, Jr. Appreciate you joining us uh, coming in. I hope you had a good day. And Tisha, uh, glad y'all coming. Yes, indeed. Okay, let me say to you, God bless you. Have a great weekend. I think we're going to have pretty weather this weekend, and I hope that uh, it works out good for everyone. It's time for that to send me in some homework. Let me see some videos from you, some business cards. There's lots to do, and I'll help uh, promote your business all we can. Y'all take care. Good night. God bless you.